Hello everyone, it is Caitlin, and today we're going to use four different historical courses to discuss how to dress yourself when you have no one to help you. Alright, so let's get started. I have four courses to do today. Uh, some of them are very easy to do by yourself, and some of them require a little bit of practice. Alright, the first corset is a um, little mini corset, basically. It's a short corset uh, dated to around 1820, and it's a wraparound corset. So this one's extremely easy to get on by yourself. So this is what it looks like. So on the front, it does look like a regular corset except for the fact that it is um, short. But as boning, it has the little bust gussets, it has a bust down the center front, the back, however, is um, tied. It, it's just li looped around, so put this on as normal. And you pull. You can see how it goes in the back. And you kind of just pull a little tightly. And there we go. So super easy corset to put on. <laughs> really no lacing involved. The only thing you had to do was actually tie these little ties up front. Um, back support, not the greatest um, in terms of some of the other corsets we're going to try on today. But it is very easy to get on. Um, it is very supportive still. Um, like I feel supported. The only thing is sometimes when I sit down are my bust likes to go out a little bit. But if you tie it tight enough, that doesn't happen. So really it's just a make sure it is pretty tight before you pull it around. Obviously I can still breathe in it. It just goes to my waist so easily bend um, as if I didn't have it on. It's basically just like a longer bra almost. But um, just a little bit more supportive. Boning is really just to keep everything in place. This is the corset I usually wear when I am after a at after hour stuff where I still need to be corseted because there are men around. But um, I don't really want to do the full-on uh, corset for the 1820s and 30s. So that is what I use this one for. It's really not something I wear typically, around the, especially around the public and that sort of thing. But it's just a little wraparound corset. So that was the easy one. That's the easiest one we got today. So I'm going to take this off, and we can do our next one. Alright, my next corset is my typical 1830s corset. Um, this one's a full long corset that is partially laced. Let's fix that. Sometimes I get lazy when I'm undressing. I just want to get done very quickly. But this is definitely an 1830s corset, not an 1820s one, although I've worn it for 20 stuff because I forgot that I had metal eyelets, which is not coming to the very, very late 20s. So I do need to make myself a nice um, 20s corset, which is basically going to be this corset, except for better fitted, and then it's going to have bone eyelets. And I have a kitten playing with my laces, so this is not going as quickly as it normally would. Normally I would just put it on like this, but because we're learning how to lace yourself in a corset, I do want to show it completely unlaced first. It's very, very correct to have a cat play with your laces. There are lithographs and paintings of cats playing with women's laces, so it's a very period correct problem to have. Cats have not changed. Alright, so we're going to do what is called spiral lacing with this particular corset. Uh, spiral lacing, if you look at the corset itself, it has two at the very top, the next one is offset, so it's half the distance of the other grommets are, and then from there it's offset, so you'll go this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, you jump. And so the grommets or the eyelets in um, a spiral laced corset are not going to be even. If you see corsets that are laced even, it's usually going to be what we prefer now to as bunny ears um, type of lacing. I always, I usually refer to it as the loopy lacing, <laughs> lacing with loops. But um, no, this is definitely a spiral laced corset. You can't really lace it any other way. Um, it's just the way I put the grommets in. And you do see a lot of excess corsets that are spiral laced. When you're getting dressed by yourself, I actually prefer a spiral lacing. 
But here's what we're going to do. So what I find the easiest thing to do is to put it on backwards, find the beginning of my lace. I actually should steal it from the cat, that's what we're going to do. Find the end. You need a very long lace for this. And then I'm going to pick up a needle, put the lace through the needle. And this is going to make it way easier. If you get a nice big, maybe upholstery needle, you need to make sure it's going to go through the eyelets. I find the bone eyelets are very small. They have a very small opening. So you need a much smaller needle there, but you need a eye that's big enough to put the laces in. All right, so I have it already tied on. Uh, you're going to tie it to where there's that half one. You're going to tie it to the top right above the half um, eyelet. So that's just tied in a double knot. It's very secure. I can pull on it. And now I'm going to make a decision. Do I want to go up in that side and down on that side, or do I want to go down and then up? I think we're going to go up. So I went from the bottom up on this side. Pull that tight. And now I'm going to go from the top down. And go back up from the bottom to the top again. And then I'm going to pull that pretty tight. I'm using my elbows to hold the corset in. Okay, once you get a couple of them on, it'll stay by itself. And that makes it so much easier. Okay, so that one's up. I need to go down on this one. Um, that the loop on the bottom, it's very hard to see, doesn't get caught on your, the bottom of your chemise because it will pull it up. And of course, drawers and underwear are not a thing in this time period, so that would not, um, that would not be good. Unless you're doing that sort of show, then okay, well, we do you. So as far as how long you need your laces for this, it's going to depend on um, how much of a gap it, there is between the corset sides of your corset. So a corset should never lace shut. If it laces shut, it means it's too big. There should always be a two to six inch gap in it. So you measure six inches all the way down. So that's six inches at the most every time you have a lace. So it's six inches, six inches, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. like that's a lot of inches. You add all that up, and then I would add about an arc. Then I would add about two yards of ease, um, really three, because you do want to know, because this is not tight how, it, how it's going to be at the end. This is just a general loosely laced so that I can turn it back and, and finish lacing it in a moment. But it's going to very much depend on your corset. It's going to depend on what type of lacing you're doing. It's going to depend on uh, how long your corset is. I always err on cutting far too much and then cutting it down. But let's just say you're going to need yards and yards and yards of lacing. And then I have about that much extra. Put my needle down. And now we're going to turn the corset. So you don't want it super tight, you just want it um, tight enough to where it's not going to fall down, but loose enough where you can easily move it around. Adjust your shift. Go ahead and put the straps on, it's easier to do it now. So now I have my lacing string here, and I'm going to start pulling just a little bit at first. So I'm just going to start pulling all the way down. Whatever side you went um, from the top to the bottom of the corset, that's going to be the easiest one to actually pull on. And ideally your corset would have the same spring or gap all the way down from your bust to your hips. This one clearly does not. I have lost weight in some places and gained weight in others. so. So it no longer fits like it should. 
In fact, I need to make a new 1830s corset. It's, it's on the list of things to do. This time with bone eyelets, I can make it swing to the 20s if I need to. And when you get all lace to your liking and all the excess out, which is, is not quite as tight as I like it, but for demonstration purposes, it's going to work. So you have a really long lace. I find it easier to hold the lace in place and spin around it. Letting the cat have his fun. All right. And then with the very end, take it underneath the other bits and tie a little bit of a slip. That way it stays in place. And there we go. So that is the 1830s corset um, spiral lace. So basically a spiral laced corset without a front opening basque. Um, you could also do the loopy lacing or the bunny ears lacing. Uh, some people use fan lacing for the 1830s. I really can't find a lot of evidence for it. So there's the lack of a corset that everyone uses as documentation. When you blow up that picture, you can very clearly tell that it was actually a spiral lace corset because of how the laces are offset. I don't know, I have not found enough evidence for the fan laced corset, so I don't use that. Um, if you have evidence for that, I would love to see it because I think that would be an awesome thing to do. Um, it does seem a lot easier to get yourself dressed when you just pull it over your head. And that is the other option. I don't like that option because it messes with my hair, but you could keep your corset fully laced, um, just loosely, put it over your head, and then tighten it. That's also another option for lacing yourself in a corset. Um, I find that messes with my hair, so I don't use that uh, method. Also, I have pretty wide shoulders and a pretty wide bust, so it has to be super loose to get over my body here, and then I just, I find that I really tend to um, mix up my laces, and they get tangled, and they get super frustrating for me. Um, that's just personal things that may not happen to somebody else, but for me, I find it easier to turn it around, lace it, then flip it over, um, as opposed to actually just putting it over my head fully laced. So, if you're a smaller framed, you may not have that problem, you may actually find that to be a good option of just keeping the corset laced, folding over your head, and then tightening. That's another option if that works for you. It just happens to not work for me. But 1830s corsets. So I think I should go change my hair uh, for the 1850s and 60s, change my um, underwear because this is very clearly a Regency style shift, and we'll be back to do two more corsets. All right, third corset this one, which is my late 40s to early 1850s corset. Um, it has a wooden busk still, a bust gusset on either side, no hip gussets, this one's shaped in the hips, and I have bone eyelets, so that's kind of cool. Anyway, we're basically going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to show you um, loop lacing or bunny ears lacing. You notice that these grommets are completely um, par parallel. So this one matches and these match and these match and these match all the way down. It has, they have a match, they have a partner. So different than spiral lacing. Okay. Now for this one, you're going to need needles on both ends of your laces. So we're going to put that in there, put that in there, okay. All right, so I find it easier to do this one at a time. Okay, so I'm on this side. Now, notice how this lace is up, so for this one, I'm going to go underneath this lace first, so I'm going to go down on it. I'm going to skip one and go up the next one. It just goes a little faster when you do it this way instead of one at a time. Okay, now I have this one, other lace, which was up on this one, so we're going to go 
down in the one that we missed before, and then go up on the next one, and pull it all the way through. Drop that, pick up the other one, check, the okay, so we're going up. This one we're going to go down in the very next one. Oops. Skip one and go up. Okay. Pick up this one. Oops, I got that tangled. So this needs to come out. There we go. Well, you want to make sure your laces are free every time. This one is coming out, so I need to go in on the one that we skipped. Go underneath this lace and then go out on the very next one. Okay, and that's basically your pattern. So at this point we're going to do something a little different. Instead of crossing over, I'm going to put this straight down in the next one. This is right around the waist. Okay. And I'm going to do the same with this. Go straight down on the next one. Come here. Okay. And leave a little loop. Alright, now I'm going to take this. That was down. So I need to go up in this next one. Same with this one. Go up in the very next one. And now we're kind of back on our schedule. Okay, if you find yourself running on laces, which actually we, we may have just enough here. So there's only one more uh, eyelet on either side. square knot at the very bottom. Something that if you pull on it really tight isn't going to pull out, okay? Alrighty. So I have my two loopies, but we are going to turn the corset around as we did before. It should still be loose enough to turn. Notice how I did this with the last one too, but I didn't talk about it. I'm pulling it too far over and then pulling it back that's to help with the chemise because it like it helps it look nicer and to go easily back to its former shape. Remember top loop it. Top ones pull on of course the top of the corset, the bottom ones pull on the hip part. But you just kind of get your finger in there and you pull the X. So you should be feeling two in your hand at all times and then pull. it over like this, give it one last little pull, pull into the front, and tie them here. And there we go. That one is, that one goes much faster. Um, the bunny ears, which I have seen at least one lithograph, I believe, um, engraving, let's put it that way. It was a drawing of some sort that did clearly show bunny ear, she had 1830s hair. So, um, I can at least somewhat document that to 1830s. But, yeah, this is the 1850s corset that is still not um, front opening yet. So I can still move in it, like I can bend, I can do what I need to do in it. Of course, it shouldn't be um, restricting. They should be comfortably tight um, and they should be firm and they should be supportive 
but they shouldn't be uncomfortable. That is corset number three in getting dressed in yourself. This one is much faster, but um, but it's just another way to get yourself dressed. And again, you could very well keep it super loosely laced and then um, just have it laced all the time, put it on and then tighten it. Again, I just find that to be a little bit more cumbersome because I tend to tangle my laces a little bit more when they're super wide like that. But if you're not that type of person and it works for you, that's another really easy way because you don't have to spend the time actually fishing with the needle every time. And now comes the easy one. We're gonna start and stop on easy ones today. This is my 1860s corset or later 1850s corset. You see it's already laced because we have this wonderful, wonderful invention called this front opening busk um, up here in the early 1850s to late 1840s. So to put this on, I'm going to loosen my laces. It is bunny ear lace, just like the last one. Just put my things loose, just like that. Okay. And I have the ties which are apparently a little bit knotted. Okay. This is the one we don't have to put on backwards. So I have my corset. I'm going to um, connect this little hook and eye busk seal. I do find that on original corsets it does seem that the uh, uh, the hooks are further further apart so like they'll only be like four per corset or something like that. But this still works so love my front opening busks. Same deal. There we go. Pull on the X's. it's comfortable. This is about comfortable for me. Okay. Grab both laces, flip them around, maybe. You don't lose them. Get a kind of one little pull. Tie them in front, which is a lot easier than tying in the back. And that way when you go to the toilet, you're a lot less likely to have your laces fall into the toilet and get nasty if they're in the front. So, that's another reason I do that. But this is my 1860s corset. Way easier, like from start to finish, maybe a minute, minute and a half. Um, much, much easier than the whole having to lace yourself, turn it, and then tighten it. This is just pop on and tighten. So, that's that in the back. And once the front opening bus comes in, really from the early 1850s all the way up till horses became ambiguous. This is what you're going to use. This is what you're going to see. It is that easy to get yourself in a corset. The, the difficult part is the ones without the front opening bus. And we've taken care of that. So, that one is super easy. And it's super comfortable. I can still move around it. Even with the metal busk, I can still bend in it. It's not not as easy to bend as in the wooden ones, but you can bend it. Um, all my corsets are either corded, or and any boning is usually the German plastic whalebone, which is basically baleen, but plastic and legal. But, um, and then usually there is steel boning in the very, very back, because plastic boning, even the whalebone, doesn't tend to hold up very well in the center back. So I usually do one row on either side of metal and everything else is boned with the German plastic whalebone, which is why when I take this off, it looks just like my body. Like you can see exactly where my hips curve um, because German plastic whalebone will mold to your body just like original baleen did. So it makes it a lot more comfortable because you're not having the steel constantly springing against you and fighting your body shape. This one after wearing a couple times just molds right to it and makes it super comfortable. So 
forcetry is um, an interesting thing to dive into, but it really is necessary if you're going to do real historical interpretations that people were wearing corsets. I mean, just as ambiguous as the bra is today, you are going to be wearing a corset here in the 19th century. So um, whether that is a really simple corset that's mostly corded, and you know, literally just a support garment to lift up the bust and to lift up the bust and then keep the weight of the petticoats from sinking into your hips, or whether it's a fully boned fashion corset to actually change the shape of your body, it varies from your class. It depends on the year. So many things go into that, but placing yourself, if you are a living historian, or an actor, or just a costumer, can is definitely something that is needed, and not a lot of people have that skill. I know a lot of people who think they cannot be wearing corsets because they don't have anyone to lace them. All it requires is a little bit of practice to get your hands back there, um, and that's just doing some simple exercises and getting your flexibility up, and then it's super easy. So I really do hope this video was helpful for people. I guess we can go ahead and get out of this one and be done. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you lace yourself in the corset for what style of corset you use and what method works for you, and maybe I can learn something as well. And uh, thank you so much for joining me, and have a fantastic week. I'll see you back here on Monday.